ambiguous case. Side, side, angle, where the angle is a non-included angle. And so suppose we're given an acute angle and two sides. So here's my acute angle. Okay, and here is my side. So this side over here, I'm going to call this adjacent side. And the length opposite of my angle, okay, that length there, it, there's a couple of different... So the length opposite of my angle, there are four possibilities for its location. So let me actually add this, let me create a right triangle here because that's going to help us in figuring out what the four possibilities could be. And so this length here of this line that's perpendicular here is going to be called little h. And so now this length that's opposite of my angle, if it's the length of h, if it's the length of h, it's going to actually create a right triangle. But notice what happens when my opposite length is less than h, then I'm not going to be able to create a right triangle no matter where I move it. Now, what about if if it's bigger than h, so it's a little bit longer than h? Then notice that we can create one or two right triangles. And so again, we, we if it again if the length opposite of my angle is greater than h then I can create two different triangles. One by moving the, the side opposite of H, so passing H, or tucking it in before H. Two different triangles, so that's another possibility. There's also possibility where the length opposite of my angle is greater than my adjacent side. So here right now it's the same as my adjacent side, but if it's longer than my adjacent side, then I cannot make two triangles because it would just get too large. Okay. Okay. And so if my if the length opposite of my angle is greater than the adjacent side, then we can only create one triangle here. So let me talk about all of those different scenarios here. And so I'm going to call this length here, I'm going to call this one the opposite side. And again, we don't know this side down here because we are in the ambiguous case where the angle is not included. So let me talk about the four different possibilities for the location of my opposite side. So we did talk about them already. So the first possibility is that my opposite side is equal to my h. And if this happens, we have exactly one right triangle. Let me draw this out. So we have one right triangle. Again, this is my angle, this is my adjacent side. And this is my opposite side. The other possibility that we talked about is if the opposite side is less than h, which is actually what the figure is showing right now. And so if my opposite side is less than h, then we would have no triangle at all. So no triangle can be formed. So 
So here we go. Right, so again, no triangle can be formed at all because again, we cannot connect this. The other possibility that could happen is that the opposite side is less than my adjacent side, but greater than my H. And that's going to create two different triangles. So my adjacent side, let me start with the, with the opposite side. So my opposite side is... It might make more sense if I write it the other way. So H is less than my opposite side. And my opposite side is less than my adjacent side. And if this happens, this is going to create two triangles. So let me draw this out. So one of them is going to have the side before H. So it's going to create this little triangle here. And it's not a right triangle. So there's my adjacent side. Here's my opposite side. And again, this is triangle one, and then triangle two, my, my length, my side, is going to be past H. Adjacent side. Opposite side. The other scenario that we have, oh, this would be, actually this would be scenario three. This is scenario four. The last one is that um, not only is my opposite side greater than my H, but also greater than my adjacent side. So opposite side is greater than or equal to my adjacent side. And if this happens, we only have one triangle. And it's going to be an obtuse triangle. So it's going to be an oblique triangle. Let's also talk about the possibility where the angle that's given is not an acute angle, but an obtuse angle. So if angle given is an obtuse angle. then we would have two different possibilities. So 
if opposite side is so if opposite side is less than or equal to adjacent side then no triangle is formed So here's a picture of this. So remember, this is going to be an obtuse angle here, the angle that's given. This is the adjacent side, adjacent side. And this is, and again, here's my opposite side. And so if my opposite side is less than or equal to the adjacent, adjacent side, then no triangle is formed. The other possibility that we can have when we have an obtuse angle is that if the opposite side is greater than my adjacent side. then only one triangle is formed. So here we go, let me draw that situation. So here's that angle that's given, here's the adjacent side. And here's the opposite side. All right, and so again, in this case, only one triangle is given, is formed. In this case, no triangle is formed. All right, so we have different situations here. So let's just do a little summary again. <laughs> so if the angle, if the angle that's given is in a cute angle, we have four different possibilities. All right. So if my opposite side is equal to H, then we're going to have one triangle. If the opposite side is less than H, we're going to have no triangle. If H is less than the opposite side and the opposite side is less than my adjacent side, then two triangles are formed. Okay, the adjacent side are the same, the angle is the same, and so is the opposite side, but we're going to have two different triangles. The fourth possibility is that if my opposite side is greater than or equal to my adjacent side, then I'm going to have one triangle, right, and it's going to be an oblique triangle. So actually, I think I forgot to write that down, so this is going to create one triangle. Now, if the angle that is given is an obtuse angle, then we have two different possibilities. So if the opposite side is less than or equal to the adjacent side, then no triangle is formed. But if the opposite side is greater than my adjacent side, then one triangle is formed. Let's try an example, just to get, our, get all of these ideas. Um, Let's practice all of these ideas. So suppose that we're given that alpha is equal to 41 degrees, that little a is equal to 3.3, and b is equal to 5.4. And it says to solve the triangle. We first have to figure out how many triangles we're going to have in the first place. And so we're going to have to set this up and figure out if my opposite side is less than my age, if it's greater than or if it's equal to, so that we can figure out how many triangles we're going to have. So let's sketch this out. 
we're given alpha. We know that alpha is 41 degrees, which is an acute angle. We know that the length opposite of that is little a, which is 3.3. .3. And again, we don't know if it makes a triangle or not, so I, that's why I'm not connecting them. And then we have that B, which is going to be this side here, because remember it's not it it's a non-included angle. This is going to be equal to 5.4. All right, and so the deciding factor here is going to depend on what h is. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find what this h is, what the length of this perpendicular line is. And so I'm going to be able to use the law of sines here. Actually, we don't have to use the law of sines. We could just use regular, um, we could just use uh, sine. So we have sine of 41 degrees is equal to h over 5.4. Because remember, this h creates a right triangle. And so we get that h is equal to 5.4 times sine of 41 degrees. Now if we plug that into our calculator, we get that h is approximately 3.5. So now, if h is 3.5, are we going to be able to create a triangle? So notice that my h and the opposite side we have to compare those two. The opposite side is less than my h. So remember, my h is 3.5. My opposite side which in this case is a, that's equal to 3.3. So since opposite side is less than my h, then we have no triangle. Let's try example two. Given that beta is 556.3 degrees, A is 8.3 and B is 7.6, solve the triangle. And again, our first step is to figure out, all right, how many triangles are we going to actually create? All right, and since my angle beta, the one that's given, is an acute angle, we're in the case number one. So let me just sketch this out, and again, we're trying to figure out how many triangles we're going to have. So here is my angle beta, which is 56.3 degrees. And you know what? Let me make this a little bit bigger just because, again, okay, and again, I, I, the, when, the reason why I'm not connecting them is because I'm not sure if we're going to create a triangle or not. So again, this is my angle beta, which is 56.3 degrees. My adjacent side is going to be my little a. So little a is equal to 8.3. And the length opposite of beta is going to be little b, which is 7.6. And again, we don't know if we're going to create a triangle or not. But we do know that b is less than a here. Little b is less than little a. All right, and so the next step is to find out what that h is because h is going to determine, is going to help us determine how many triangles we're going to have. And so here is little h. And so let's find h first. So we have that sine of beta is equal to h over little a. So let me plug in all these values. So we have sine of 56.3 degrees is equal to h over 8.3. And 
we multiply both sides by 8.3, we can solve for h. So h is equal to 8.3 times sine of 56.3 degrees. So if we plug this in our calculator, we get that h is equal to 6.9. All right, so now what's going on? We know that h is 6.9. The length opposite of h is 7.6. So we definitely know that we're creating a triangle. But since the length 7.6 is greater than 6.9, but less than 8.3, that means that we're going to create two different triangles. So let me write this down. So since the opposite side is so if since the opposite side is again greater than my h but it is less than the adjacent side This implies that we're going to have two triangles. All right. And so again, remember, one of the triangles is going to look something like this. And the other one is going to have the length away from h. So this one's, this one's before h. This one's uh, after h. And to, um, just to let you guys know, remember this length here is the same. This is little a, this is little a, this is little a, this is little b, this is little b. Okay, so if we actually put these two triangles together, we can actually put these two triangles together. So you can either solve them separately or kind of m put them together. So again, this is my side B, that's right here, B. This is going to be my little A here, that's this little, that's this length little A here. And then this angle here is going to be this angle here that's given. All right, so uh, notice that this angle here, these two angles here sum together, sum together are going to be equal 180 degrees. All right, so... Again, this is going to be, if this is, so angle alpha and alpha prime are going to end up equaling 180 degrees. And so I'll talk a little bit more about that in the next, in, in this same example later on. So alpha plus alpha prime is equal to 180 degrees. And again, that's a property that they have together. Alright, so let's actually draw these out. So here's triangle one. So again, this is when the length is before H. And so this is my angle, which is 56 point three degrees and we said that this is my little a my little a here is eight point three again this is beta so this is going to be b is equal to seven point six and so if this length here is little a then that means that this is my alpha and this is beta so that means that this has to be my gamma here and then this length here is little c which again we're going to have to look for we're going to have to look for little little alpha little uh, sorry alpha beta and little c here's the other triangle so triangle number 2 
looks terrible. <laughs> Again, this is theta, 56.3 degrees. This is little a, 8.3. This is little b, 7.6. All right, and again, this is going to be my alpha. But notice that I'm going to call, actually, I'm going to call all of these, I'm going to call this one beta, beta prime, alpha prime, and gamma prime, just to keep them a little bit different from here. So notice here that this alpha is going to be an obtuse angle. This alpha prime is going to be an acute angle. But both of these two are going to add up to 180 degrees. And so this is going to be little a prime, b prime, and little c prime that we're going to be looking for. All right, so here, again, we're missing little c here alpha and beta here. On this side we're missing C prime, alpha prime, and gamma prime. Right. Notice that again angle alpha, little a, little b, they're the same in both triangles. Alright, so just just again just notice those things. Now we're going to have to use the law of sines to help us solve this triangle. And again, this triangle is not a 90 degree triangle, so we cannot just apply sine and cosine. We're going to have to actually apply the rules of the law of sines. Since we have beta and little b, and we have little a, then we can actually use the law of sines to find alpha. So we have sine of alpha over little a, which is 8.3, is equal to sine of beta, which is 56.3, all over 7.6. And so again, we want to solve for alpha. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 8.3, so I get sine of alpha is equal to 8.3 times sine of 56.3 all over 7.6. So I get that sine of alpha is equal to 0 0.9086. So if I apply the inverse, I get that alpha is equal to sine inverse of 0 0.9086 which gives me that alpha is equal to approximately 65.3 degrees. But again, remember, this alpha here is an acute, no, this one's going to be an obtuse angle. This one's my acute angle. And so since this one is an acute one, this one's actually alpha prime. And so I'm going to write that over here. So this one's actually going to be alpha prime, which is 65.3 degrees. And so again, in order for us to find the obtuse alpha, we just do 180 minus 65.3 degrees. And so this is going to end up here. Maybe I'll write a note. Since this alpha is acute, then alpha prime is equal to 65.3 degrees, and alpha is equal to 180 minus 65.3 degrees, which is going to equal to 114.7 degrees. And so this alpha here is actually going to be 180 minus, again, my alpha prime, which is going to be 114.7 degrees. Now, now I know alpha, so now we have to find, oh, actually, since we know beta and alpha, then we can just do 180 minus beta and alpha to find gamma. So 
So we know. So alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to 180 degrees. Which means that gamma is going to equal to 9 degrees. All right, so we know a couple of different pieces. Now all we have to find is C, but all we, ha we have all of the different pieces, so we can use law of sines with any of these to find little c. So we have C over sine of 9 degrees is equal to 7.6 over sine of beta, which is 56.3 degrees. Solving for C, we get that C is equal to 7.6 sine of 9 degrees all over sine of 56.3 degrees, and we get that little c is equal to 1.4. Alright, so we found everything that we're missing in triangle 1. So little c, we found that is 1.4. Alright, so now let's solve triangle 2. So let's solve it the same way. So alpha alpha prime is 65 degrees, 65.3 degrees, and beta is 56.3 degrees. Now if if we sum those up and subtract by 180, we'll get alpha we we'll, we'll get gamma prime. And so we know that alpha prime plus beta prime plus gamma prime, that's equal to 180 degrees. And that gives us that gamma prime is equal to 58.4 degrees. So we have most of the, we have most of the parts except C prime. But again, we can just use the law of sines. And so we have have that little c over sine of 58.4 degrees is equal to 7.6 over sine of 56.3 degrees. And again, solving for c, we get that little c is equal to 7.6 sine of 58.4 degrees all over sine of 56.3 degrees. So if we use our little calculator, we get that little c is equal to 7.8 approximately. And we found everything. So we have that um, alpha prime was 65.3 degrees little c prime is 7.8 and that gamma prime was 58.4 degrees. Right. So this is an example where we have two different triangles that are created and we would have to solve for both of the triangles.